Yo, what's good, everybody? So today we're going to be talking about that all-in event at London Wembley Stadium, bro. I got to say, this got to be one of the greatest wrestling event that's ever happened in a long, long time. And that's on all. Because Tony did a great, great card list, okay? Sadly, I would say one bad thing that I kind of wish that could have happened... I kind of wish a Chris Statlander would have pulled up, put a night to bend her title. But at the end of the day, she didn't go. It didn't happen. There's no going back. It already happened. But the event was still phenomenal. Okay? Let's start off with the first, first, kind of first match of the night. It was the kickoff show. It was MJF versus Adam Cole. Okay? This is the card right here. NJF and Adam Cole going for the tag team champs of the ROH division. ROH tag team champs against United Empire, okay? Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Oi, oi, oi. Great, great, great show. It was a great match. It lasted about like 15 to 20 minutes. At the end of the day, at the end of the match, MJF and Adam Cole won the match phenomenally. They did great. We saw a kangaroo kick. We saw a double clothesline. We saw everything we all wanted. The whole arena was electrifying, okay? But I was wrong about that prediction. I thought MJF was going to lose, and then the last match of the night was going to be super, like, it's all or nothing. But either way, they won. So now Adam Cole and MJF are now the ROH Tag Team Division leaders, and that's great. Then we had Jack Perry versus Hook. For the Fuck the World Championship, okay? And let me say it again. The Fuck the World Championship. It was FTW rules. So there's no rules. It's straight battling, straight gore, straight fighting. This match was very, very good too. A after this match though, Hook was not... I mean Hook. Jack Perry was not finished fighting people. And he beat the shit out of CM Punk. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I think that's funny as hell. Um... Hook won the title, and it was such a great w victory. They used the w they used a car window shield. They used uh, weapons. They did they did so much stuff. It was so fun. You definitely gotta go check it out. Uh, I liked this. I I like how it went to Hook, and I did predict it. So I'm very proud of myself with that one too. Uh, Hook, I really hope that when you are champ this time, you are actually gonna start defending it more. Because I don't want it to go back to a shoulder accessory. Last time you had it, you didn't really defend it as much. And it was kind of like an accessory. Like, oh, my dad made this title. Now I have the title. Yada, yada, yada. I'm Taz's son. But Hook is such a great fighter. Which confuses me why when he had the title before, he didn't defend it as much. I really hope that he does defend it because I love Hook's matches. He's such a great talent, and he does deserve to be a great title defender. So please, Hook, defend this title with honor. It's such a great title. You're such a great fighter. There's no excuses. Next match. Oh, wait. Before that, let's talk about what happened. Jack Perry did fight Punk, and in my opinion, this is the second people who fought Punk. So, in my opinion, I think Punk might be the issue in the back of the locker room. I don't know if Punk is the one who's starting shit with people. Because I've we've never heard of Jack Perry doing anything else with anybody else. And Jack Perry is one of the four pillars. So, he's like one of the staples of this company. So, I don't see why he would do something so uncontrollably or like unrational. Like, it, it had to be, in my opinion, Punk's decision like last time punk got beat up by the elite was because punk was talking shit about the company and they didn't like that so they said you know what let's treat let's teach this guy something and punk probably said something else and boom putazo now this altercation did not go too bad it didn't get too physically because punk did have a match right after and punk did defend against Samoa Joe and won which I kind of got that prediction hella wrong, but the match was still great. I kind of wish Samoa Joe would have won, but the match was not like, oh, I'm punk, I win. No, it was like they fought, 
Punk got a lucky win and he won. That's it. He like it's understood that he beat Joe and it was a fair fight. It was a fair fight. No cheating, no nothing. No nothing. They did break the bottom of a table, which is crazy to me. So yeah, that happened. Uh, another match that was really great and I really enjoyed was a triple tag team championship match. Which is the House of Black versus the Acclaim. And I got another prediction wrong. Like, oh my god, bro. That's two for two that I got completely wrong so far. And I can't believe. No, wait. That's. No, two for two. Yeah. Because I got Hook right. And I got. No, that's three for one. I'm three for one right now. Okay, I just realized I'm really bad at counting. But either way, yes, the Acclaim won this match, and I was very, very, very surprised. But Badass Billy Gunn did show up today, and it was no joke that he is still one of the greatest wrestlers of a long time. Well-deserved t- a title hold. He's. Ne- I don't think he's ever held a title. He's way before my generation. So, I do got to say, Billy Gunn didn't deserve this. He did deserve the title, and I'm very proud of that. Now, another match that we had today was Darby Allin and Sting versus Swerve and Christian Cage. Okay, this coffin match was very, very entertaining, and Darby still surprised me. I don't know how the hell this kid is still walking, and he's still being able to move around. This guy takes so many, like, bad back hits that it still surprises me to this day he's still able to move and he's still able to move as fast as he does with no issues so at the end of this match i gotta say i was very surprised and i was very entertained sting and darby did great sting is still bad luck with the tables that's two for two tables that he has had like bad issues with um if you guys don't know what i'm talking about you guys can go check it out but let's just say that Sting is not heavy enough to break a table, okay? Uh, I do feel bad for Swerve's back as well. And at the end of the day, Swerve did get thrown into the coffin. It was such a great match. I really loved it. I thought Swerve was going to break his hands because Sting did not give a shit. Uh, the stadium stampede match, that was a great match too. It was at first very, like, I knew it was going to be crazy because they never do the cameras right for this one because there's so much stuff going on. So, like, one person getting hit and they, they, you miss the shot because they're looking at someone else and you miss another shot because they're looking at someone else. So much stuff happens that it makes it very, very confusing to watch. And at, eventually they did get everybody into the ring and it was more, like, easy to watch and nothing was really going all over the place no more. But... The people who won this was not in my prediction list. It was freaking best friends and Eddie Kingston with Penta. Uh, Hell Penta came out too. <clears throat> he Penta was crazy in this match. And Moxley, oh my god. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go to AEW Social and you can see a Moxley shish kebab. A Moxley shish kebab. It was like very, very horrifying to see. But that was insane. Great match. Did not go into my favor because I was wrong with that prediction again. And it was very entertaining, though. Uh, Moxie Shishka Bob has never been something I ever thought of. And holy crap. Uh, another match that happened was the Jericho and Osprey match. The Jericho and Osprey match was very good. Okay. I personally had doubts for Chris Jericho. Because, you know, it's like old Chris Jericho and young Chris Jericho fighting each other. Who's going to win? Young Chris Jericho, of course. Which happened. Osprey did win, which I got that prediction right again. But it wasn't a landslide. At first, it looked like it was going to be. But then later on, Jericho started picking it up and started moving in. And, like, Osprey is just such a great talent. And I really hope Tony signs this man because he deserves... To be an all elite wrestler, please. Uh, Will Osprey did so good today. I was very entertained. He did so many flips, so many tricks, so many cool things. He came out with the victory and he didn't really have to cheat for it. 
the match was pretty fair. It was just an honest match. Everything was going very well for each each other. And I was very, very happy with this match. I did not look away at all. I did not go on my phone. I did, like it was like wow. And Jericho did come out with his band today, which is like the I gotta say, I believe that's the first time Jericho has ever sold out a stadium. So that was pretty cool. Uh, let's talk about the women's before we talk about the elite versus the guns. Um, the women's fatal four way was a great match. It did go into what I think it was gonna go. I knew Tony and Soraya were gonna have a little in, uh, altercation. There's no way that these. There's never been a situation where two best friends going into a fatal four way and good. Uh, it was very like it was gonna go one way or another. Uh, I did believe it was gonna go Brit or Soraya. I went Brit because she's the face of the company, especially of the women division. But I also felt like Soraya because it's her hometown. And it was like her greatest return, her first major pay-per-view. Like, it was going to be the greatest, greatest thing. And they were going to blow the top off the place if they gave it to her, which they did. And I'm very happy to see Soraya as a women's champion again. And it was so, so awesome to see that match. I love Tony Storm. She's great wrestler very entertaining i love her like uh, like how expressive she is how entertaining she can be with the fans the wrestlers like it's just tony is a great overall wrestler which i'm glad she's here and she did well okay she did really well like no jokes aside tony was phenomenal every single world any every single fighter tonight was very great i gotta say this pay-per-view for my opinion might be a 10 out of 10 I didn't have one bad moment. Um, then we had the trios match. Okay, we had the elite versus the guns, and I gotta say, I predicted the guns to win, and crazily, the guns did win because the guns are always gonna be on top. Guns up easily. Okay, Bullet Club Gold is always gonna go oh going out with the dub. That's it. It's that simple. Them losing to FTR never happened. That's erasing my memory, okay? So don't even bring that up to me. But such a great match. Very entertaining. I did not expect, uh, I believe, I always mess up his name, Takashita to pin Kenny Omega. And it was a legit pin. And I got to say, Juice, you are the greatest best friend in the world because you took so many shots for Jay Wyatt. Except that one time that Kenny jumped over the thing and you said, hell no. And you walked away. It was fucking hilarious. But I love Juice Robertson. But I'm so pissed with you, Juice. I'm so pissed with you, Juice Robertson. Because you wear the fucking trunks instead of the pants. I love your pants design. It's the best freaking wrestling wardrobe in history. I love it. It looks amazing. I love the design with Juice and Robertson. That's it. Or Rock Hard Juice. Like, it's so, so much better than everything else. It has so much character, in my opinion. But I got the prediction, right? Because I always bet on the guns. The guns won. Ka. And they came out with the dub. Not because Jessica Dikeshta, he oh, he won the match for them. No, 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 no. It was a team effort. If you watch the match, you'll see why I say it was a team effort fucking effort it was so so crazy it was one two three four five and then pin like it was such a great rollout um then the greatest tag team match this match had so much so much like it was like it could have gone either fucking way like you did not know who was gonna win tonight but every time there was a pinfall you heard everybody go, one, two, da, one, two, da. Like, it was so, like, so, like, you're literally on your feet. Like, who's going to win this? Because these two are literally the greatest tag teams in the world. Young Bucks are the greatest tag team, and FTR is the greatest tag team. In my opinion, they're both number one because they both go back and forth. There's no way one is better than the other. And every greatness, every great person needs to have another person to prove. You know, like, they always go back and forth to take a seesaw with these guys. No one's better than them, though. They're definitely the best of the best, okay? 
And FTR did win this, which I did predict because I was like, FTR is going to win this because they need to get that stamp of approval. Okay. And I was very proud of this match. I did not hate it. I did not. I'm not better where who won or who lost. This match literally, literally could have went either way. Like if you watch this match without me telling you who's gonna win, you would not know who, you would not know when, and you would not know how. Like it was just unpredictable. That's what I really liked about this pay per view. Even though I did get some of the predictions right, I was just going off my gut feeling, not my mental feeling. And when I watch other pay per views. I go off my mental feeling because it's more obvious <coughs> because because <coughs> they go off of who's better for the company than who's better overall. And for AEW, they go for who's better overall, who's who make a better story, who do this, like who's really actually a wrestler, wrestler, headliner. And they don't go for who the fuck is like the better for the company. They go for who sounds, who actually deserves it, who will actually win it. And that's why this whole pay-per-view was great because everyone won it because they're actually all in and that's it. Now let's talk about the main event. The main event was a double main event. And if you watch the pay-per-view, you know what I mean. It was a double main event, which was fucking awesome. Okay, it was so great. I'm a huge MJF supporter. I love MJF. He's such a great fighter, such a great talker, and such a great entertainer overall. Like, every time I watch his match, I can see him going like, ah, ah, what the fuck? Like, you can hear it. You can feel it. You can be entertained. Like, if I was watching this man live, I would laugh every moment. I would have a great time every moment, and I would be having a fantastic time watching him. Which is why he's one of my favorite wrestlers. Okay, definitely. He's definitely my top five of this of this generation. He's definitely one. In this generation, he's my number one easily. I love him, Jeff. In this generation, he's my number one. But overall, he must be my top five now. Um, so, if you haven't watched this pay-per-view, I would say this. Both of them won. Okay? They both won. And then one had to lose. And that's the best way to explain it without spoiling what happened. But let me get into it just a little bit. So both of them walked out as winners. One of them got a little bitter. And then they became best friends again. Like, it was such a great moment. I love that they are not separating these two. I think these two should be great friends. Like... You can definitely tell that they have a good relationship. Like, they're really good friends. And every bad guy needs one good friend. And I believe Adam Cole is that one good friend for MGF. And he's going to be that one good corner. He's that, you know, Jiminy Cricket. That's MGF's Jiminy Cricket. Adam Cole is MGF's Jiminy Cricket. Everybody who's bad needs to hear something good so they know what to do instead. Like, they need to hear the good things so they know to not do it and just go straight back. So, for me, MGF needs Adam Cole. And Adam Cole needs MGF. They're just an iconic duo now, in my eyes. I cannot unsee it. But, of course, I don't think they're going to have a long-term um, tag team run. But, they're going to have a great best friend run. And that's all that matters in my eyes. And I can't wait to see what happens after this. So that's why this pay-per-view is just great because after everything tonight, I need to see how everything is going to end. How is everything going to move on from this point forward? Which is why I believe this pay-per-view is one of the greatest pay-per-views because everyone who won and everyone who lost had a story right after. It didn't just end. You know, now they have to do something else. Like Chris Jericho has to go fix shit with Sammy or he has to move on. Will Osprey now can move on and say who the fuck is next? I want a title shot. I want this. BCC can now move on and do their own things, or they're gonna continue beating up best friends to prove that they're not better than them. You know, there's so much of Soraya is now going to have to prove that she's still the greatest of all time in the women division. Joe's going to have to pick back up and see what the fuck he's going to do. Hook needs to defend his legacy, his family legacy. 
the House of Black, now they have to do something else. They claim Billy Gunn has his first title. Like, there's so much stuff. And Young Bucks now have to go back into the grind of being the greatest of all time. FTR had to certify and stay the top. Like, there's so much shit. Kenny Omega needs to redo himself and beat Don Callis. Like, there's so much stuff that can be happening now. Which is why All Elite, All In London was so great. And I'm very excited that next year it's going to be in London again. This is basically going to be the WrestleMania in my eyes. Even though they hit 81,000 35 people sold seats inside the arena, sitting, watching the matches. That is wrestling history. That is wrestling history. And it wasn't a WrestleMania. Let's be clear. It's not a WrestleMania. If a SummerSlam, a Money in the Bank, an Elimination Chamber, a King of a Hill Survivor Series were to sell that number, that's a big deal. If a WrestleMania beats this number, in my eyes, they didn't beat it. They didn't beat it. And don't do that bullshit where they do that double night WrestleMania and they count both of them. That does not count in my opinion. No, cut that shit in half and that's your actual number. That's it. So, WWE, I can't wait to see if you're going to top this, if you're going to try to compete with it, or you're just going to move past it. But All Elite, Tony Khan... Every single person in the roster who fought today, who supported the others, who trained them, who helped them move forward, who, like, was there to support. Congratulations. You guys are now the record holder of the wrestling history books. I am very, very happy for Tony. I am very happy for Chris Jericho. I'm very happy for the Young Bucks because they are still... The part owners of this company. Kenny Omega. I forgot Kenny Omega. Sorry. They are the ones who funded this company. Who started the trailblazing. And Cody. But Cody is sadly not there no more. So and that's what I'm saying. The people who are still remaining. So for anyone who's like. What about Cody? I'm just saying. But congratulations. You guys did well. You guys are really, really revolutionizing the wrestling industry. And I'm so happy. So happy. Because I used to love wrestling. And then. The other company was slowly drying out for me. And now that you guys brought this back, so happy. Oh, and also, House of Black, you guys almost made me tear up. You guys gave me goosebumps for the Bray Wyatt thing you guys did. Murphy, I know Action, um, I mean, Malister back, or Black, he did it to Brody. I don't know if you knew him, but I'm pretty sure you accepted it because that's still... A wrestling brother, even though he wasn't in your wrestling family. That was phenomenal. And for the people who were wearing the braid sleeve, that's phenomenal. Um, FTR, Bray Wyatt, and Brody together. That was such a great, great thing to see. Thank you, guys. I love that. It made me really get goosebumps. It was such a great thing to see. So for all you wrestling fans out there, I hope you guys actually enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I did love doing it. Uh, if you guys would like to see this more often, please leave a like, a comment, and maybe even, like, shoot me another conversation we can talk about. I can study it and try to see what I can say about it. But I love y'all. I'll talk to you guys later. And remember, for all you hunters out there, to keep on hunting, all right? Don't give up. I believe in you as much as you believe in me. So peace out and have a good day. Bye, y'all.